In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's number one top ranked best fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we got all three of those best of all time. Uh, We answer a lot of fitness and health questions that are asked by our listeners, but the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion. So, this is where we talk about current events. We talk about what happened over the Labor Day weekend. Oh, snap. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of the whole episode. By the way, if you want to fast forward to your favorite part where we answer a question or talk about something you're interested in. It's not your favorite part. Go to mindpumppodcast.com. Everything is time stamped. But if you want to have the full experience, start from the beginning. So here's the breakdown. Uh, we open up by talking about Masterworks. That's something that uh, Adam talked about and brought up. Uh, then I talked about the tulip bubble. <laughs> and the cannabis market. Yeah. Um, so Adam's uh, speculating on the ca- cannabis market, and it kind of reminded me of the tulip bubble of a little bit random Denmark a long time ago. I know it's weird. Then I talked about making sauce with the family over the weekend. Those of you that are Italian <laughs> and listening to this podcast, you know every year right around Labor Day, you get together in the hot sun and you make a bunch of jars of sauce. It's about to the sauce. That's that's what I did. Then we talked about some shows on Netflix away. Seems to be a great show. And then there's a show on Prime or a documentary on Prime about Robin Williams uh, called Robin's Wish. Adam highly recommended that. Um, then Justin talked about walking the creek and finding a floating surprise uh, with his family yeah. over the weekend. Then I talked about the Snickers bar. A, a, uh, a, a website article about the healthiest cereals out there. Magic Spoon was listed on there. Magic Spoon has no sugar, very low carb. High in protein. It's got whey protein in the cereal, and it tastes amazing. And when you compare it to the other cereals on that list that I read- It's way better. It's way better. I can't even believe that they're in the same uh, (laughs) category. I I just caught that. That's pretty good. Yeah, that was slow, Sal. By the way, Magic Spoon is a sponsor of ours, so because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. So if you want to try out their no sugar, high protein, delicious flavored cereal, they have like fruit flavors, they have- Berry flavored, peanut butter flavored, chocolate, a lot of different flavors. Mm. Here's what you do go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump. And oh, there's also a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like the box, return it, get a full refund. Then I talked about another company we work with, Public Goods. This is a company that provides you with products for skin, hair, cleaning products, household products, um, all at wholesale prices, all of them healthy, uh, minimal chemicals. Uh, the 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 containers that they're in are eco friendly. It's very very it's a great company, and they just got funding because they're blowing up. So get in there before they raise their prices. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you'll get a hookup. Here's what you do: go to publicgoods.com forward slash Mind Pump, or you can use the code Mind Pump, and you'll get fifteen dollars of free stuff yeah. with your first order. It's kind of cool. Then we talked about San Francisco's government buildings having open gyms this entire time. Oh, San Francisco. Oh, my God. You guys keep pissing us off. Yes. Then Justin talked about his wasp trap that he made with a bowl of water, some soap, and meat. Hillbilly ideas. And it worked. Then we got into the fitness question. So that's about 32 minutes long. Then here's the questions. The first one, what are the best three or four exercises you can do to get your deadlift strength to go up? The next question, this person's dad went to the doctor and the doctor said, hey, don't squat. It compresses your spine. Uh, Instead, do the leg press. So we talk about why that doctor was totally wrong. We also recommended that their dad do some correctional exercise work, and we recommended our Prime Bundle. Our Prime Bundle has Prime Pro and MAPS Prime. Both programs help you assess your body, all the different joints of your body, and apply the right correctional strengthening exercise movements so that you have greater ranges of motion when you work out. You're able to perform exercises with more stability. In other words, these programs help you perform better by making you move better. They're correctional and they can be applied to any workout. Again, those are our prime bundles. You can find those programs and others at mapsfitnessproducts.com. The third question, this person says, look, if I'm not sore, does that mean I need to do more in my workout? And the final question, this person wants to know what our best financial advice is for newlyweds. Again, Ooh, one, more t- wheelhouse. one more time, I want to mention that site, mapsfitnessproducts.com. That's where you can find the Prime Bundle. But you can also take a look at all of our other different MAPS programs. Find the one that is designed for you. We have a lot of them for different goals and different people. Go check them out, mapsfitnessproducts.com. Yeah.
Do you guys have anybody that? Do you have any friends or anybody that? I does? do have friends. No, you don't. Uh, that's, that's a lie. A lie. Well, I have some. <laughs> wait, you guys? Know, bold, we both know that's that. a bold yeah, face. You guys lie. aren't my friends. Well, yeah. I, I guess but you, you pay us, us though. You know what I'm saying? It's different. We're uh, forced to be here. Yeah, it's different. You're my hooker, <laughs> hooker friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you guys have any? No, do you guys have any friends that do um, masterworks? Have you heard of that before? It's like a way you can invest in uh, paintings. Are you familiar with this, Doug? Have you familiar with this? You're a little more artsy than these no, two. No, not familiar. You're Bro, not. Are you gonna Are you gonna fall for another get rich quick oh, scheme? Man. No, I me. If I don't fall for those things, I'm fucking allergic to that. I don't shit. know anything about paintings, or there's value, a, or anything. It's so, always mystifying to me. So there's like a stock market for for paint for like. You know, old ass, you know, million dollar, multi million dollar paintings. Do they have like a Beckett or whatever? Yeah, and you can and you can buy shares. It's called it's called. Are you looking it up right now, Doug? Yeah, it's kind of cool. Like, uh, it's called Masterworks. I think Masterworks is the name of it, and it works like a stock market, very similar. And you can buy shares of of this like. Uh, well, you can actually have, be partial yes, owner of a yeah, painting. Yeah, that's worth millions of dollars, and so it's there's like. This stock market for paintings, and in fact, it continues to go. It doesn't fall, and they say one of the things that's great about it is it's a safer bet than like the real uh, the um, oh, that's stock I, market. I don't know about oh, that. What about if it gets burned or like you know you know damaged? What, I'm sure bad. there's insurance. Well, yeah. anything with demand is going to have value, right? But you got to be careful. Like, you guys ever heard of the tulip? Crash uh, back in I think it was in where was mm. that uh, Doug yeah, the, the tulips, tulips, Holland the so, yeah did you hear about this where at one point they tulips the value of tulips went through the roof for some reason and people were using them as currency and then the market got flooded with tulips and it crashed and people lost fortunes did you guys ever hear about this no this is a real they're thing. they're trading tulips look it up Doug pull it up on the <laughs> that's so bizarre pull it up on the interwebs this uh, is a, this is a little different because Picasso can't paint any more paintings yeah that's true. Uh, <laughs> So it's going to continue to hold its value or go up in value, bro. Yeah, so it's a lot different. Because you can keep growing yeah. tulips, right? Yes, so these, so keep- these owners that are just now like making it uh, public so people could buy shares of it? Or yeah, is this- I'm not even fully aware of like exactly. That's why I was curious if you guys had heard of it because I was reading an article on it. It was the Dutch tulip bulb market. <laughs> it was the bubble. <laughs> Dude, it, I, I mean, mean, I feel like that's a little. I mean, sick. I'm listening, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like who's like, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I mean, that's well. Here's you know, speaking of weird plant bubbles, I'm tripping out right now. Here's some marijuana news for you guys right now. The marijuana market, right marijuana now news. is exploding right now. It, the prices are higher than when I entered it over ten years ago. How is really? that possible? I, right. So what, is it because, this, this is what happened, I think. This okay, is my right, theory. Right. Um, and I don't know, and somebody can DM me, they, correct me if they, they think I'm wrong. But don't waste your time unless you're fucking right, for sure. I hate when people speculate. <laughs> I don't have time to read 400 speculations. I just want to counter oh, you real In quick. other words, don't message yeah. me. <laughs> so here's my theory on that, and, and I'm totally disconnected. So I've been, recently I've been talking to some good friends that are still in that space, and uh, I always inquire, hey, how are things going? What's going on with that? Because I feel like I, I exited the market at the right time. Like I rode the wave, uh, did well, and then left and was over it. But out of nowhere, the prices for – and the, the way you kind of tell like what's going on in the market is the, the price per pound. Like what does it cost for a pound of exotic, really good weed? And when I was leaving, you could get the best stuff on the market um, wholesale. If you went directly to a farmer, you could get it for 21, uh, 22, you know, around there. For 100. A, yeah, 2200 a pound. Now, was that on the actual tax market or was that off? Like- yeah, no, that's going directly to a farmer. Okay. okay. That's going directly to a grower, somebody who is growing hundreds of pounds. So and wholesale, you, wholesale, essentially. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, that's not, most people aren't seeing that. Retail that's getting bumped, but that's still pretty low when i first entered it was like three thousand you know three thousand dollars for a pound and then people obviously take it to clubs and then they break it down and they sell it and then Mm -hmm. that pound ends up being worth 5500 or more right when it's broken down so anyways it was that's where it started at about three thousand when i entered over uh, 10 years ago and then on the way out it was down to like two thousand to twenty two hundred a pound it, there's now stuff going for thirty five hundred to four grand a pound wholesale same thing yes wholesale now, is it because... Oh, so here... Oh, sorry, yeah, hear me, I, I didn't finish theory. my theory. Yeah. So my theory is that as I was going out, it was becoming more and more legalized. So it's become so... Le- and we kind of speculated on this, my buddies who stayed in it. We thought... I said, the only chance that this has to still be okay for the, the farmer or the guy like you that's brokering stuff to clubs is if the market gets so saturated 
that clubs start getting a bunch of fucking garbage. And that's what's kind of happened is everybody now, because no, everyone's not afraid to grow anymore. Mm. Like back when I was in it, it was still sketchy and gray market. So you had a very small pool of people that were growing for the masses, where now it's like everybody and their sister grows six plants in their backyard to supply themselves or try to make a little side money and, and supply a club. So because of that, the market and then it, and it became a race to the bottom. Everybody's like, "Oh, you can a pound for what? Fifteen hundred? Oh, a pound for twelve hundred? Oh, a pound for a mm-hmm. thousand? So it became like this race to the bottom and just a f- flooding of of marijuana everywhere. Now what you see all these strains that are at what are the prices that I'm saying three thousand, thirty five hundred, even some crazy ones around four are all strains I'm unfamiliar with. They're like completely so they're exotic new crossbreeds that are exotic strains that only like your master growers are able to grow and get their hands on either the seeds or the strains. Mm -hmm. And so it's now created a connoisseur market. So for someone like me who I don't, that's what I'm used to smoking. And if I go to a club right now, I get this B grade, terrible weed. So I, if I want like the primo shit, I got to go back and spend top dollar now for this stuff. So is it, is, is a pound of, of cannabis from the farm that is not, you know, premier, right? Just your run of the mill pound of cannabis. Has that price changed? Oh yeah. That's like through the floor. Okay. So, so that's, yeah, I, I agree. Then what you're saying is probably it then. Yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I was, so I had, I had outdoor. It's like Kobe beef versus, you know, ground beef. Yeah. I had outdoor and indoor, uh, and my outdoor, when I was on my way out, I was still getting, I but I had like super top notch stuff for outdoor. Like we we took really good care of everything, right? So it was like we were getting fifteen hundred. The those same pounds now are going for six hundred dollars. Wow. Dang. Yeah. Wow. So Is dabbing still a thing? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how do you turn you know a substance that isn't super dangerous into like it's like the meth of of yeah. Of, Cannabis, yeah. Like how do you how do you make it so addictive, essentially, and really bad? Uh, I don't know. I it's just remember seeing like uh, you know all these Instagram people coming around with like dabbing and just like acting like zombies. Oh, yeah. nasty stuff! Looks never, like fun. I've never tried it, and I have no no uh, desire to even try that. Yeah. It's not all. it's not for people like us. You 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 and I. I mean, even me, right? So I probably out of the three of us, I smoke the most. But even then, like, it's not like I don't smoke throughout the day and shit. It's like, you know, not even every day of the week. I probably every other day have something right before bed. And it's so minimal. Like taking something like that, like you have to be like a a chronic smoker to want to move up to dabbing because it's just it's 10x the strength. It's great. How do they get the motivation? Yeah. It's like yeah, you don't. I normally, don't they don't have motivation. Yeah. I think you <laughs> so believe you. Do. That's yeah. like my, like my brother like thinks he's like super motivated. It's like, oh, I need more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't no, know, bro. I, I think th- you're chill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think yeah. maybe you just get some snacks. He's yeah. like, dude, you yeah. don't understand. Yesterday, I wrote down five business ideas and check it out. And you read it, yeah. like, uh, you know, ketchup yeah, cereal. Read back. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of weird. Yeah. 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 Top ramen, you know, half servings for kids. Yeah. I don't know. Kinda so, weird. how'd you guys beat the heat this weekend? Oh. Oh it was my god. I was, in, I was in two I, I different didn't. pools, man, each day. Uh, oh, no, I didn't, dude. So this so every year, I've talked about this, you know, the past few years. Every year, uh it, it right around Labor Day is when we do when we make our sauce. This is a big thing with Italian families. It's a, the sauce. Everybody gets the my dad went and got nine hundred pounds of that, tomatoes. That's crazy. It's it, I love it. We go anywhere between eight hundred to twelve hundred pounds is usually what we do. And gets Roma tomatoes. What does that fit in? Yeah. He has a work van. Oh, okay. So he fills the whole back. Like one of those creepy ch- Chester vans? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Except bigger. Oh, yeah. no, no windows? Yeah. You could fit three people in the back. Yeah, totally. Easily. <laughs> oh, good. Long, long Handcuffs ways. and all. Yeah. yeah no windows um, or anything on the sides. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. But it's funny. When I used to work with him as a kid, he had a, uh, an older work van before. And this is how gangster it was back in the day. It only has two seats in the front. But he'd take me to work, and his worker, his helper, would be on the other side. You sit like on a, a, a milk crate. The milk crate. My dad yeah. literally yeah. made a wood box for me to sit on, and my seatbelt was a rope. <laughs> like why? Why even yeah. bother? I mean, so yeah. I just there's a rope that I hooked around like Dude. this this bolt. Just, oh my god! I used to drive one of those work. The visibility is horrendous. On those oh, things, dude. dude, try backing up in one of those. Bro, he would load it when I would work with him. He would load it with so much sand and cement or whatever that the back, man, it was like the, there was sag. no room. Yeah, and if he hit a bump, he'd have to go over it slowly just to bring. You know, I was like, <laughs> we're gonna crash. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he filled the back up with just boxes of tomatoes. 
And so we get there, and of course, it's the hottest day of the year. Oh, yeah. Um, and the way it works is you have- Have you thought about changing this tradition to like a more like- No. <laughs> like more reasonable no, time of year? This is the yeah. best time. So it's not just my family, by the way. Uh, now I'm starting to see people post it on Instagram. I'm seeing lots of people who are posting that they're making sauce. So is this like- No, I, I, li- I was like thinking about that. I was like, this is a great idea. Yeah. Is this like, is it like the when the, the tomatoes are the ripest and this is the best time to get it? It's I mean, always the best time. Yeah, this okay. is right, right around now is the best time okay. uh, to do it. So you and, don't really have an option. You can't be doing this in. Yeah, you like a sp- uh, specific farm you guys always use. My or? dad drives down to Gilroy, oh. and he'll go to farms, find the best ones, and they'll sell them. But you know what they used to do back in the day? So think about this: nine hundred to twelve hundred pounds of tomatoes. Back in the day, and I can kind of remember this. I was really young when they stopped doing this. We used to have to go and pick them. So part of the process was oh, you wow. went and then you pay the farmer, and they'd let you pick your own tomatoes. So that was a whole day. A whole day, everybody I mean, would go. You let me work. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Thanks. And you just picked yeah, all. Yeah, these, yeah. Here's know. money. But now he gets to go, buys the boxes, brings them back. So we get there, and he has the garage set up. He's got the tomato machine where uh, you put the cut. I'll tell you guys the process. Okay, so on the side of the yard, we have the boxes of tomatoes, and then we have four big bins full of water. Okay, and what you do is you transfer them to one bin swirl them around, kind of wash them, transfer them to the next bin. Trans- so you go three or four bins until they get to the cleanest uh, bin. Then what you do is you got to cut them in half. So you got to cut all the tomatoes in half. Then you bring them inside. He takes the half cut and half tomatoes, puts them in this huge metal pot over a burner, and you cook them and cook them until they kind of break down. Then you take that and you bring it over to this machine that every, you know, first first second generation uh, american from italian immigrants has in their garage guarantee where you put the tomatoes in there you you push them down it spits out the sauce and then the other end is the seeds and the and the skin that comes out so you put it through the machine then you take that you jar them then you take jars and then you boil the jars to seal the jar so this is the whole process oh wow Dang. so we all go there and this time it's me and my cousins and we're all we got everything open and you know what, what's the, the temperature cuz it was like 113 up where i was bro at. in the garage it was with the flame thing going oh, to over 120 yes I mean, easy <laughs> yeah we're sweating we're hot poor jessica she's pregnant she's trying to help and she's just <laughs> she's just dying oh, yeah man. at one point she goes inside you know bro she, wife gets a pass on that one uh, yeah. i no, told her yeah, yeah. she yeah. wants to Go you know, sit on the lazy she wa- it's such a it's such a great tradition because we all see each other and right, now right. it's at my parents' house because my grandparents are old and I told my parents when you guys are done with this I'll make sure to maintain this tradition but I'm gonna do it different this stays in here but I'm gonna get a fucking air conditioned warehouse I'm gonna rent a warehouse yes every year what's the point of making That's good money if you can't right do there. shit like in that in fact bro. I'm not only gonna have a warehouse I'm gonna hire workers to do it we're all just gonna show up and eat lunch <laughs> <laughs> yes have some drinks <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch it all unfold yeah. Ugh, yes. fold out chairs have just, a beer and talk about it just supervise remember when we used to pick the yeah. pick the tomatoes yeah. and uh, talk oh, about stories oh, dude, the machine, memories you know, the machine yeah. that we put the tomatoes through used to be done with a hand crank i remember that where the kids were the ones cranking it oh, all the time. Like, do you ah. know that you know gilroy salinas area is like one of the best places in the country to grow tomatoes you know that yeah really i yeah, didn't i, I didn't know uh, uh garlic of course well they they well, have the temperature yes the temperature and- is so i didn't know I, salinas is actually like which we consider salinas kind of like the armpit of the bay area mm. but it's for like oh, for, for farming, farming yeah. it's the, the temperature like it's one of the because of the San, fog rolling over, San Diego, Salinas, and I forget what the third one is. Or like, we've the, gone down to Salinas for tomatoes. Yeah, it's the best like temperature mm-hmm. year round. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't say about Salinas. That was the first gym I managed. I know, but it's was true it though, right? You, yeah. And what would what did everyone think of that gym? Yeah, yeah, but I loved it, dude. The people in Salinas were so great when I managed that. I felt like the I was like the mayor of the town because it's a small town, you know. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, you managed the. The gym or whatever. Mayor Sal. But anyway, it was a lot of fun. We did the whole thing. We jarred them all, finished the whole thing. So now we got sauce for the next year or whatever. But it's funny because my cousins, they're all in, they're all either newly married or engaged. And so their wives or fiancés, this is like the first or second time they've been a part of this thing. Mm. And they're so – it's funny seeing outside people coming in. Because when I was a kid, I hated it. I, I was like, oh, we got to go make sauce. Like I'm going to go and cut tomatoes and wash tomatoes and be hot. Yeah. But then as you get older – 
you start to appreciate Isn't you know what, funny? what you took for granted. And it tastes better. And right? their fiancés and wives, when they show up, they're like, this is the most amazing thing ever. I, I love this. I can't wait to do this next year. And I, you know, you hear them from the outside, and you're like, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, it is kind of awesome. But as a kid, I was like, so oh, how hell no. Totally now, how do, you, being cool. how do you decide uh, who gets how many jars? Is it only the people that come and help in the family, or does you distribute throughout the whole family? We like- distribute through the whole family, and we don't have enough space for everybody to come help. It would be impossible. So some people don't come. That's okay. They get jars. Not a big deal. So everybody gets jars. People, usually my parents and my aunt will be the ones that contribute to the cost. But think about it. Look, it's four, it was about four or 500 bucks for the whole operation. That's it. And that's, that's you're talking about 900 pounds of tomatoes worth of sauce. Yeah. That's not bad. No, I told my parents we got a business. A, a secret little well, you that's, know, addition at nah, the we, end. We can sell these jar for five bucks. We'll be all right. That's yeah. what I'm wondering. I'm wondering like how much paprika. money you actually probably save. I mean, as a family, you got to save a ton. Four or five hundred bucks yeah. is not very much. It's not just the saving of the well, money. Well, of course, it's I the, know that. The, if you eat real sauce, yeah. it's or like they say in the East Coast gravy, which I doesn't I don't like, but whatever, that's your thing. It's 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 fresh. It's light. It's not, uh, you know, it doesn't have a bunch of stuff in it. You know, you eat and you, you eat a bowl of pasta and you feel good. You don't feel like you got to take a nap because it's full of all kinds of crap. Yeah. Like Americans make tomato sauce like pizza sauce. It's too much stuff in it. Yeah. It's supposed to be very light. But I sound like such an uh, such a <laughs> elitist snob. A snob. Yeah, such a, a <laughs> tomato snob. A sauce snob. Yeah, anyway. oh, yeah. Dude, Justin, best yeah. shirt. You, have the, you oh, won the shirt award. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally, uh, I, I mean, you inspire me with certain shirts you've been wearing lately. And I was like, I got to represent, you know, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, get people to watch this movie. It's I so relevant re- right now. I got to rewatch it. Where did you, oh, get, so where'd you get that? Did you just find it online? You know, there's this cool uh, website. It's like 80s tees or something. And I got like uh, another one of my Star Wars shirts from there too and I was like man they just have like really good throwback stuff and and you know of course that's my jam you know that's what I'm always talking I about I finally got to the bar fight on Cobra Kai. oh <laughs> hey did you not all did I you could, not get so hey, hyped all I could think you about was you, punching I, the I air. could think about was Sal standing up in the living room because yeah. I told Katrina the story ahead of time I'm like I'm waiting for this scene I don't know where it's going to come but there's a scene where they get in a bar fight, all the Cobra Kai guys, and Sal supposedly got up and like was in his living room throwing punches. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did yeah, so, get so you all fired up. So it came, and I was like, oh, didn't man. it get you excited though? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. I bet yeah. I ruined it by t- I shouldn't have said anything. Yeah, yeah. you probably should have said because yeah, when yeah, they went yeah. to the bar, I thought in my head, I was like, oh, I bet they're gonna get. Of course, I mean, I knew I knew there was a scene right right away because you said something. So I was like, so I, obviously it probably killed that a little bit. Oh, yeah. I so so speaking of old movies, it's funny though. By the way, how they live is trending big time right now oh, is, is it, it? Oh, oh i didn't know it was i just did I, I, people are posting like crazy about i was it. talking about it a while back and then i was like oh my god i gotta watch this and i watched it and got all into it again so i can't i'm gonna watch that with my son uh because we're right now we're on a streak of watching old uh movies mm-hmm. and so far i am so proud of my kid like he loves all of them you nice know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Exactly. i'm sitting there waiting for his reaction and he so we watched the original total recall oh, uh, yeah, with yeah. arnold Sick. you know what the storyline on that's pretty damn smart yeah. When you, I watched it again. I, and I, you know, went through the whole thing, and now as an adult, I'm like, this is a good story. But the the two parts he loves the most are the lines that Arnold says yeah. when he kills someone. You know what I mean? Where he's like, Oh yeah, he always says those. He's got the drill, and he's drilling the guy, and he's like, Screw you, screw you. you. Know? <laughs> and uh, there, there's a, and then the, of course, you remember the scene in Total. Re- what scene do you think stood out the most to to my my 15 year old? The boobs. The boobs. boobs. Yeah, of course. Yes, <laughs> so I go there. You know the rest. The yeah. best part was the girl with three breasts. Oh yeah. Total yeah. Re- You never heard that song? No, I didn't. Right, no, no problem. That's a, that's a, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a great. It's one, a good though. song. Yeah. Hey, anyway. speaking of TV, uh, I have a couple ones for you. So there's a new show trending on Netflix right now called Away. Almost didn't watch it. Uh, yeah, we've been watching that. Yeah. Oh, did you start it? Uh-huh. Oh, good. What'd you think? I liked it. Yeah, no, it's cool. Oh, yeah. I saw this the picture of it. I it's better it. than uh, Naked and Afraid because it's like, uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, obviously, they're not there with a crew or anything. And it's just about like them trying to, like, every day having to get food and survive. And it's not like there's no drama or fluff. I mean, there's drama just because it's like right. you know, crazy conditions. But right. yeah, it was interesting to see how everybody dealt, dealt with it. I almost watched that last night. I'll, I'll yeah. check it out. No, so that one's pretty- good. And then I, wa- I also watched uh, Robin's Wish, which is. Robin Williams documentary. Mm. Did you guys? Did you guys know how much do you know about like his his suicide and everything like that? Do you guys? Did you guys read much about it? No, not much. I just knew he's really depressed. Okay, and, and so you got to watch. So that's you have to watch Robin's Wish then because 
what the, a lot of people, this documentary is a lot of people that were really close to him finally coming out and speaking out about what was really going on. So it's like a big secret. Nobody. Yeah. So dude, he was battling this, this type of dementia. It's called Dewey's Dewey's dementia or something. Maybe Doug can look up the, the condition in, but it's a really rare uh, degenerate uh, uh, neurological condition. And he didn't even know that he was suffering from that. And so they, they, they talk about like the last movie, the last shows he was doing and like talking about his brilliance and then watching it kind of deteriorate mm. and then him struggling with that, not understanding what was going on with him. They couldn't figure it out because all huh. his other health markers seemed to be fine. And so it's really, it's really fucking sad, but it's also like you guys said exactly what I thought too. Like, oh, he was depressed. Oh, and Louis body disease. Yes. That's what it was. Mm. Not Dewey. So when did they actually diagnose that though? Like not till way a late? After his death. Oh, so they man. did a, the oh, autopsy. Shit. That's why you got to watch it because nobody knew this when it first happened. When it first happened, all the speculation came. Oh, he hung himself. Oh, he was depressed. Oh, that he was short on money. Like all these crazy rumors were yeah. flying everywhere about what would cause him to take Because you see that from like the funniest people. People, uh, you know, there's that other side where they're they go home and they're like super depressed and they it's almost like they need that, uh, you know, like affirmation, like going Bro, on stage. The sad part, this dude did not want to leave early. He did not want to leave early, but mm -hmm. like he was literally like dying inside. Oh, like, that sucks. Yeah, yeah so it's worse. It's sad but good. I mean, they did it in a way that was. It's not like it's a tearjerker or something the whole way through. It's a really good like. It's a really good bio on him and telling his and everyone talking about his brilliance and his talent and old clips and and then like the last series that he was doing on on TV and the last uh, show that he did which was the museum one I think it was part three or whatever mm. and they talked about like what they were watching him go through and so it, so did they know did he tell people he was depressed and feeling bad no like he tried to really like fight through it <sighs> because he didn't know like it, it, but it, he never communicated to people like man I don't feel. Not myself. really, not really. You know, it, he. That's he, why depression is such a. Rough, it's so tough sometimes because people don't say anything, mm -hmm. and you oftentimes. I, I used to. Try, I had to train this client that I had no idea she suffered from crippling, like crippling, crippling de de depression. She would show up and she would put on a smile and a like a like a happy face and like laugh and try to like. And you could, I could tell that she was a little different, but I, I never had. I had no idea. Yeah. Until after, until much later. When one of my uh, one of my other trainers became really close friends with her and told me she's like you know so and so has suffered from crippling depression for forever and I was like no I never would have guessed never would have guessed that's how he was Man. right so very only like the closest people like really could tell like different things were going on but it was, even then it was hard because he was trying to cover it up he was trying to get by mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know but he was like all of a sudden the guy who was like famous for being able to remember crazy lines and do things off the cuff was all of a sudden having trouble remembering lines and doing stuff like that. And he was fighting it to try and overcome it because he was still doing all this television. Mm. And so he was right in the thick of all of it, still okay. trying to cover it up and act like he was fine and normal. And it was just getting, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Well, it's my, like well. super rapid. They break out, they break down how the disease works. And then literally they all, it all results in death. Oh, like cool. nobody gets through this shit once it once it spreads through the whole brain, like it's and almost all of them actually end up in suicide. So it's I didn't know anything about this disease at all, but it's so bad that it gets gets to a point where they most people that are battling it like they just want to be done. Yeah, neurodegenerative huh. disorders have, have been rising for a little while now. Part of it's because people live longer, and the other part of it's probably due to poor health. Uh, you know, so I don't know. Mm. Yeah, it's a uh, we we actually um, my grandparents, my grandfather in particular is showing signs that he's been getting kind of depressed or whatever, not feeling good. Part of it's because my grandmother, she had a little mini stroke. And the other part of it is that we they haven't been around their family. They're so family oriented. So this weekend, every ma everybody made it a point to go to my grandparents. And, you know, they were in the garage and we were all out there. But we all went there and we're just hanging out with them. And boy, can you see the difference in my grandparents from seeing all their kids and their family, my cousins, from, uh, you know, but they, they drove a couple hours, they came down. I hadn't seen them in a long time ever since COVID. And again, we were being respectful and keeping our distance, but my cousin started crying because she just like, I, you know, I've been trying to bottle in how much I've missed being around everybody. 
and you really just realize how important it is to to be around people and family and stuff, you know. No. Oh yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's massively yeah. important. So what'd you do to beat the heat? What did you what'd you guys do, Justin? Uh, I actually because there's the beaches and everything were closed. That was gonna be my first move, but like everything was closed. All the state parks and everything were closed. And so I think they were just doing that to because of Labor Day. They didn't want like crowds of people coming over and like mobbing all these different places all at once. And so yeah, that was fine. But so I usually have my go to like I don't live that far away from this creek. And uh, so I just walk down, and so we go creek walking, and we kind of go exploring and whatnot. It gets everybody outside, get some exercise and all that. But, like, it's literally, like, 20 degrees cooler, like, as you walk down uh, it, this valley. And so we're walking down, and then we go to our normal spot, and there's, like, like hundreds of people. Like, everybody <laughs> found our spot. Oh. I was so pissed. <laughs> yeah, and they're there. Like, there's this waterfall. It's a cool place. But so we're hanging out there and everything. And, uh, you know, Courtney and I are getting, like, anxiety because it's just, like, all these people. And we're like, ah, oh, let's go back, you know. And I'm, I'm going back, and I see uh, what I thought was a stick, but it was floating uh, alongside the river. I'm like, oh, my God, what is that shit? It was human shit. Someone took a dump Someone in took the creek. a dump in the creek. Oh my god. <laughs> like and in so your, I was like in your creek. Yeah, in my creek. And and so it's like you guys ever seen that movie? I think it was Stand by Me where like like baby we got Ruth. a floater, yeah. baby yeah. Ruth. Yeah. You know, and so I thought about like just screaming at the top of my lungs to embarrass whoever did it, you know, and I was just like there's a poop over here and I was trying to tell everybody like point at it. <laughs> who dropped like, We're the hell out of here. I'm who like who a, does that? Who drops a deuce like that? Yeah, and like it some, must have been like some teenage boy thinking it's yeah. funny. 100 people in the creek and you're like hey buddy i gotta take a yeah, shit I'm, right now watch I'm not, it i'm not gonna lie that would have yeah, been hilarious exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was so disgusting yeah dude. for oh. sure a teenage boy with his buddies who thought that would be hella funny because there's a bunch of families oh. out there like i'm gonna take a big shit yeah. right here let's hey, see oh. hey, where dare, it pops you, up you dare me take a dump in the yeah exactly <laughs> oh, hey watch this yeah, yeah. 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 it's like a hover it must have been real quick because like there were so many people there how could you not see that is there is there any category of people more disgusting than teenage boys <laughs> oh. no they're, they're, they are the worst absolute worst honestly dude I was uh, Healthline. You guys know the website Healthline? They, yeah, pretty yeah. big health website. Yeah, and yeah. they they did a, 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 a page. They had a post or whatever <laughs> on the top ten um, healthy cereals or low, you know, low carb or high protein cereals. Oh shit! Did Magic Spoon make it? Magic Spoon was on there. Uh, and boom. Boom. you know what's funny? I compared Magic. So you look. So what they did is they listed the cereal. They listed the ingredients. Talked about why they liked them, and then the macros. Right. These other cereals are like six grams of protein, seven grams of protein. There are twenty grams of carbs. They only they, they only made it because it was like probably low in sugar and more and less artificial dude, stuff or what? Magic Spoon blew them away. Yeah, it completely blew. No sugar, very legit low carb and a very high protein, good quality protein. The other ones didn't even come close. There were some of them that were like shredded wheat type cereals. I'm like, man, who made this yeah. list? Because yeah. <laughs> it's whole wheat. Yeah. That's okay. cool though. I mean, yeah. they've been getting all kinds of good pub, dude. I've seen them pop all they're over exploding. the place. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah, they're, you know who else is exploding? Public goods. Public goods sales has quadrupled uh, since February. Boom! Since Pine Pump. They're now, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, we signed off on so it. So they're, right? they're now in CVS. Did you know this? No, I did yeah, not. Public goods now has no uh, products in CVS. And it's, okay, so here's how it works, right? So for people who don't know what this you pay a really low cost membership fee, and like then Costco, you, and then, yeah, and then you pay wholesale. You yeah. pay wholesale for products that have you know low to no chemicals. It's packaging a br it's a brim it's a brilliant model. It's literally brilliant. like a direct to consumer version of Costco. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, you pay a low monthly or annual fee that you pay to be a part of the membership. They just got an injection of money from some investors. So public goods is we're, we're and I, I love that when we do this. Sometimes we do this where we we'll capture a company right before they explode yeah. yeah it looks like that's what they're doing yeah. i mean cvs is a huge retail i didn't know that market mm -hmm. i did not know that yeah this literally just uh just happened well i know that so um, we're sitting here listing all of our sponsors off right even though they're not commercials for them but olipop same thing the kroger they just got it they just did a huge thing they signed with a thousand kroger uh grocery stores they're mm -hmm. in a ton they're in whole foods now i don't know if you guys have seen them in whole foods so i haven't seen them in whole foods yet yeah no they're everywhere right now yeah. too so there's a couple we got three brands like that that we've just started working with i don't nice. know if it's a coincidence i don't know <laughs> or, um, yeah a little bit of a bump yeah did you guys see did you guys read the article about the gyms and the federal or the, the uh, state buildings in san francisco yeah i was gonna bring that up it's again the just more shenanigans like i mean be consistent like all this hypocrisy is killing me, dude. Dude, the worst thing you could do as a leader is to tell the your people or whatever to do as I say, don't do as I do. Yeah. 
That is the worst. You possible. literally are saying like I'm just above all this. So what ah. they so and this follow this is you know really on the heels of what uh, Nancy Pelosi just got caught doing. Yeah, right? she just got caught going into a salon. Oh, it was a setup. Oh, yeah, it was a setup. Yeah, <laughs> except you weren't wearing a mask and you're harping yeah. on everybody. Except you knew what you're doing. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, 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 but but it was a setup. So that happened. Then right after that, I guess they someone discovered or or leaked that the the state government buildings their gyms have been open the entire time it's uh, they haven't been closed at all it's so infuriating like i mean uh, like think of all the gym owners here that have been decimated and and then you're going to do that in right in their face oh it's it's terrible i know people who own gyms who ran them well who, remember when this first happened we were like well you know if you can't stay closed for a month, then you know you need to reevaluate how you've been saving your money and your business model. You know how long has it been now? Yeah, I don't know any business that could operate or, yeah. or, or last that long. The gyms have been crushed, dude. I don't in care California. what political affiliation you have. That has to piss you off. Well, didn't they come out too? Didn't they just announce that it, the people that were not paying rent too that are, they're going to be able to come back and, and collect rent the the uh, people that own the properties? I didn't know that. Oh yeah, you didn't hear that? Uh-uh. Oh yeah. So the, I, well, maybe fact check me, but I, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, because I, I know that that the that they did a federal um, like a ban on eviction evictions until October or whatever. Right. So there's conveniently a, right before the election. Yeah. So there's, there's a ban <laughs> on evictions and that's true, but the rumor has it that they're going to be able to come back. All the people that own those properties are going to be able to come back and still get that money, whether it's some sort of a payment plan or they're going to have to pay that all at the end of the year. Like, I don't know how they're going to do it with taxes and all that shit, but I, I have heard the rumor that that's not going to just be forgiven. So if you've stopped paying rent for somewhere, because you've been told that you don't have to in hopes that you, it'll be forgiven. Mm-hmm. Uh, supposedly it's not. It's going to get tacked on to the, the end of your year somehow. So, so we'll see some mm-hmm. kind of a, a, some maybe oh, drops. No, in, nothing's oh. really free? Yeah, right? Weird. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, maybe Doug can fact check me. Yeah, it says, renters will be given an additional 12 months to rebay, repay back rent, and landlords could collect the debt through civil courts. Mm. Property owners would be banned from evicting residents for unpaid rent due to COVID-19. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, our whole state's just still on fire. Do you see the gender reveal that caused a oh, huge yeah. fire? I was going gonna, gonna, gonna to bring that up. Yeah, gender reveal party that caused uh, the big fire. Oh. I, dude, how bad would you feel if that dude, was you? Dude, terrible. Yeah. Like, and then they traced it back to that. So they must have called like 911. Like, oh, this fire got out of control. Like, how did that all go down? Yeah. Did you see? Well, they may be responsible for the cost of the whole thing. Oh, my God. Which, how are they going to pay, so there's, there's, pay for that? There's supposed, there's video. I haven't found the video, but the article that I read says there's actual footage of them. Like, having the party and then they're by a bunch of dry brush and supposedly they catches and they're trying to throw like water bottles on it. You see them trying to put it all out before they called it in. Oh my God. So yeah, that's no, it's like biggest the, gender reveal what? of all time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that kid's going to turn into problem child. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? right Remember that movie? Yeah, yeah. That redheaded kid, those asshole. Yeah. 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 That's going to be that kid. Hey, I want to hear about your wasp trap. I heard you bragging oh, yeah. to Doug about this. Yeah. 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 I, wasp, I, don't, I don't know if it's like trap? a, yeah, it's like a redneck, uh, a solution or what, but it's definitely like, um, the the low cost kind of version of a wasp trap. So all you got to do, you take like a, a beef skewer and then you put a piece of meat on it and then you basically, you have a bowl underneath it and you hang it overneath it. So, that, so the meat's like above uh, this, this thing of water. So put water in the bowl with soap and that's it. And, and literally they go after this meat and then they keep like trying to eat the meat and then they fall and get a little bit of the soap on them and they can't fly. I caught hundreds of these bastards. Oh, what? did you really? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I put like four or five of them fi- around. Where did you find this tip? I, like I, somebody Pinterest posted thing? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, me and Courtney were just like looking around because like the wasps, dude, all the bugs right now because it's so hot are like crazy right now. So they're just all out in force. And what we're a just brilliant hammered. hack. Yeah. Did you hear that they found... Uh, fleas in, uh, let me see, was it in Tahoe? I think it was South Lake. They found fleas that tested positive for bubonic plague. Oh my God. <laughs> like they've never left. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whatever happened to the Florida thing? Did either one of you guys follow oh, the mosquitoes? Up? Yeah, oh. the mosquitoes that we uh, morphed I, into something. I don't, I don't know. know wait they, for a new wave of Corona. Over yeah, there. that's going to be 2021. Yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Next, that's next season of uh, of reality Black Mirror. <laughs> no, that'll be, wait. no, that'll be four years from now in election year again. That's when <laughs> right that now right, we're in the New say. World Order trial yeah. phase. Right? Yeah. yeah the trial's almost up. How do you guys like it so far? Dude, what do you guys like it? What a brilliant idea. You know, for being that I have a little bit of redneck 
at me. I'd never heard that before. Yeah, that's, it totally works. It blew my mind. Yeah, wow. I'm not a fan of wasps, so kills me. Oh, uh, yeah. dude, like literally, what is their purpose? Well, dude? we got Just them up at the assholes. Tahoe house, so we'll have to do that. That'll be a good little hack up there because they, they're they're right now that, and we have those big ants. Those are the two things that we get up there that mm. are that are pretty bad because we have a wasp nest. I know on on the house that we oh, have to take yeah. care of. So yeah. Our first question is from Jamil A144. What are the top three or four supplemental exercises you can do to boost your overall deadlift deadlift strength? Oh, there you go. Ooh. You know, um, I'm going to give you some exercises that have worked a lot for clients um, and then exercises that work really well for advanced lifters. And these are two sometimes different categories of lifts because I think advanced lifters – We've been working out for a while. They tend to focus on things like uh, lifting off of blocks or using things like bands and right. chains. But for the average lifter, oftentimes uh, there's either an imbalance or a weakness in the in the whole you know chain of muscles that's trying to deadlift. One exercise that remarkably tends to boost people's deadlifts: single leg deadlifts. Yes. Yep. Just a, I'm glad you went there. Just first. a good old single leg deadlift with dumbbells, or even starting with body weight, getting really good at it, and then adding weight with dumbbells. You would be surprised at how stable and strong you felt with your traditional deadlift after practicing single leg deadlifts. For I would while. challenge advanced lifters there too. Mm. I, I I think that I probably think that's a no brainer. For, yeah, it's an ego thing why they avoid it. Exactly because it's you know okay if I'm a 500 pound deadlifter to go grab 100 pound dumbbells and do a single. You ain't gonna be able to do it. Well, yeah, most th- most guys won't. Right, that'll be hard. That's yeah. hard as shit. And then that's humbling, right? So you have to go grab 60s and start with 60s and work your way up. Mm-hmm. But I think some of the best I ever felt deadlifting was when I was simultaneously also including heavy single leg deadlift. I, I just felt like you said you feel yeah. so stable. And strong lifting. Yeah, I think another one though, like specifically as it pertained to what I was dealing with with my QL and um, you know that slight shift left to right. I think a lot of lifters don't really consider. Uh, I would take a a heavy dumbbell or a heavy kettlebell, and I would do like a suitcase carries uh, down and back, and just really kind of working on uh, you know making sure that my body is able to fully uh, stabilize and I can activate my obliques and, and, and keep everything. Thing uh, centered as much as possible. Yeah, along ladder, those ladder lines. Stability. Yeah, lateral stability. And along those lines, um, heavy farmer walks. Heavy yeah. farmer walks with a trap bar or with dumbbells. I always feel so much more solid and strong in my deadlifts when I incorporate those into my workouts. Another one is good mornings. Mm-hmm. Done properly, good mornings really work on that hip hinge and hip extension and that stabilization. Um, of the lower spine. And then another, here's an exercise a lot of people don't even realize can actually improve your deadlift windmills. Mm. Just uh, working up to a weighted windmill where you actually have weight in the arm that's straight up in the air and where you can go down and twist to help with that lateral stability, which a lot of people get, this is how they hurt themselves when they deadlift is that the, the weight shifts just a little bit. They don't have the lateral stability to support the weight that they're lifting and they hurt themselves. Or their body, because remember, your body oftentimes will prevent itself from lifting more weight because of its 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 own fear of injury. So you may actually have the strength to lift more or possess the strength to lift more, but your body's not allowing you to uh, to get it. It's not allowing you to to tap into it because it's a safety it, mechanism. It's a safety mechanism. Another great hip thrust. All oh, right, hip thrust. Yeah. Uh, one of the so when I'm working with someone on a deadlift. Um, one of the hardest things is to get them to understand that this is we're trying to generate power from the hips mm. and you're thrusting forward in a deadlift. You're not lifting the bar up because it looks like to the average person when you look at a deadlift, it's like, oh, you bend over, you pick the yeah. bar up. You're picking it up with your upper body. Right. When it's really it's a it's a lever exercise. Yeah, I imagine I'm pushing my feet through the floor mm-hmm. and hips forward. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you're thrusting the hips forward. Uh-huh. And so good old hip thrust are a great way to get people to really understand the the mechanics of what you're trying to do because you're you're opposing gravity in a hip thrust. It's much easier for them to understand, oh, I'm driving the hips up in the air, squeezing the glutes. But that's exactly what you're trying to do when you're doing a deadlift and you get into that hinged position is you're thrusting the hips forward instead of up like on a hip thrust. So working on your hip thrust mechanics and getting really good and strong doing a hip thrust will carry over into a deadlift many times for for most people, even advanced lifters. If you get 
if you progress your hip thrust and you start hip thrusting, you know, four or five hundred plus pounds, uh, you'll see a nice carryover into your deadlift. And for sure, for uh, beginner lifters, I think that's a great exercise. And then finally, uh, squats, barbell squats. You know, it's funny. I've had it, and I've seen this many times where my deadlift numbers will go up, but my squat numbers don't. Rarely does the reverse happen for me. My squat goes up. Typically, my deadlift numbers go up again uh, as well. So, and again, this depends on the lifter. Some people are better at squatting than they are at deadlifting. But if you're better at deadlifting than squatting, uh, or you feel much more comfortable deadlifting, try improving your squat and then watch what happens to your deadlift. Next question is from Eric in Erica in Texas. My dad's doctor told him he shouldn't squat because it compresses your spine when you load weight on your back. Instead, he just does leg presses. Is there any research you've seen about squats compressing your spine? Yeah. This is where doctors need to be punched in the face yeah, sometimes. The, oh, they get, uh, so many of my clients have been told this. Yeah, so the, the, here's the irony of this question. Yeah, it's, it's probably pre- worse, worse off. Oh, a, a proper squat versus a proper leg press. The leg press poses much more risk. Yeah. The, the, the way that a leg press is loaded, uh, when you bring the weight down especially, and you get the lumbar spine to, to, to you know extend or flex – with weight, uh, that is more dangerous than a than a or more risk than a properly done barbell squat. But let's let's go in the opposite direction. All right, so compressive forces on the spine, not good. So that means that astronauts in space who've been out there for a while should have amazing spine health, right? Because there's no gravity, right. the, spa- the, the 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 spaces between their spine are you know expanded a little bit. There's nothing pressing down on them. The reverse is actually true when astronauts come back down they find that they have a bone degeneration muscle loss this is a big problem in fact um, this is one of the major mm-hmm. hurdles that they have to uh, you know tackle w- with long space travel you know they're thinking about sending astronauts to Mars one of the biggest problems how do we keep the astronauts yeah. from degenerating because you need these forces to continue to tell the body to maintain strength not just in your muscles but also in your bones now of course we're talking about proper squats proper loading. Can you use too much weight? Of course, you can use too much weight on any exercise, but if you do it properly, <clears throat> you don't damage the spine, you strengthen the spine. Right. You strengthen you're training the, it. You train it, you strengthen the muscles that support it, you keep it stronger, straighter for longer. Um, it functions better. So, no, there's nothing in, about a squat that's inherently wrong. I think this is the same I think this is the same thing that we used to get with like our national certifications, right? I think that mm-hmm. doctors have just been they, they're always they know they could be held liable. Right. Right? So if a doctor tells your your dad uh, who's got, you know, spine issues that, "Hey, you should go back squat because back squat's going to strengthen your back." And he goes and he does it irresponsibly, loads it like crazy, has terrible mechanics, and he hurts himself. He's liable for a lawsuit, mm-hmm. so he's always going to do. He's always going to push clients in a direction that is a, a less risky or safer route because that's what's going to protect his ass. It's not necessarily what is best for the client, and that was very similar to how we were even taught as trainers. I mean, many of the exercises that we taught, you know, that we were taught do never do behind the back, mm-hmm. lat pull downs. Oh my god, that's so dangerous. Squatting below ninety. Oh my god, that's so dangerous. Bench pressing below ninety degrees. All these things. Later in your career, you find out like, oh, wow, actually, I want to get my clients to be able to do all of these mo- movements through full range of motion, but yet all my certifications taught me that I'm supposed to stop here, and it's for safety measures. And so that's where it's coming from, and that's what you need to be able to express to your dad is to him to understand. But always full range of motion and any exercise that we do is going to be ideal, but you got to make sure that he does that safe and doesn't try and load the bar really heavy until he has really good mechanics. Yeah, it's a gradual progression. And, and, and you know, if, if the prerequisites of, of him going through and not having like proper stability, if that's not in place, then yeah, it, it would be problematic. Yeah. And so it, it, again, but that's not, it's not to just throw that exercise out. That's definitely something to work your way towards. And like, what does that look like? A proper trainer would be able to kind of assess ways to, to regain that stability, regain the strength, get proper support and mobility around the joints uh, to support the load properly. And and then just gradually start to load. I would not load ahead of time. Like it's not just to say like go load right away and let's work this out. It's there. There's steps to this, but you can't just like make a bold statement like that and eliminate that when it's so. Uh, I mean, I mean the results speak the, for themselves with people doing this. Yeah, properly done squats with good control and good stability applied appropriately to the body to that person 
is one of the best possible exercises you could do. That's that's hands down 100% true. So there's two pieces of two things I'm going to say here. One is I recommend for your dad our prime bundle because that is a correctional exercise focused uh, maps programs. And so what they're going to do is in those programs he goes through assessments. He identifies issues with mobility. He corrects his movement, and they'll get him to the point where he can do squats properly, safely, with good stability, good strength, and then reap the, the tremendous benefits you get from the squats. Now, the second part is this. If, if we're going to use the logic that your doctor uh, gave him, then we would also eliminate any kind of running, walking, or hiking. If you were to add up the repetitive stress from every step you took, because let's say you weigh 200 pounds. Every time you take a step... The compressive forces on my spine are more than 200 pounds. I'm stopping gravity. And you add up all those steps all day long, it would look absolutely terrible. Oh my gosh, don't walk, don't move. Compressive sport, you know, uh, forces are too high. This is true for any anything that gets your body to get stronger or improve is somewhat of a stress. Whether mm-hmm. you get go out in the sun and expose yourself to UV rays or you handle rough objects, or you work out with weights and strengthen your body. It's a slight stress, but it's the right dose that makes the difference. When it's the right dose, not only is it not damaging, it's healthy and it's strengthening. And again, if we were to break down what happens to your body, even with the proper workout, if I took Justin and I put him through an appropriate workout, and then while he's working out, we tested his body, measured inflammatory markers and hormones and damage markers and all that stuff. From a on the computer, it would look terrible. I'd be like, oh my gosh, Justin, stop doing what you're doing. Your inflammatory markers are going up. I see micro tears in your muscle. This must be absolutely terrible. But we know exercise is not terrible. It's phenomenal. It's one of the best things you could do for your body. So this is terrible advice from your doctor. And by the way, doctors have the the average doctor has zero education when it comes to proper application of exercise. They do. I know. I used to train a ton of doctors and surgeons, mm-hmm. and they hired me for a reason. Their expertise is is a very narrow but very deep and specifically what their doctor's for. That's what I would stick to. But when you ask them stuff on exercise and diet, um, they usually don't know any more than the average person who reads the, you know, the average health article. Not to mention that part of the benefits of learning and, and performing a good squat is the, the core and low back strengthening that you get from it. When, you, when people look at uh, squats as just a leg exercise – and they try and switch it out with something like leg press, which absolutely requires zero core stability or low back stability or strength. It's like defeating the purpose of what the real benefits of learning how to squat would do for this person. This person who has potential spine issues, nothing is going to help their spine more than getting a strong core and back muscles to support that spine. Mm-hmm. If you do something like a leg press, you're going to atrophy that. You're not having to work it whatsoever. If you eliminate squats... Mm-hmm for uh, for the leg press where you do not have to use any core stability and no low back muscles are being engaged when you lay down on a, on a, in a seat and press with your legs all the only benefits you're getting from that is some leg development but a squat is so much more than that and learning how to squat is so much more than that so when you want when you have a client like this and that was always the hardest thing as a trainer so I understand where this this kid's coming or this guy's coming from with trying to probably explain to his father that he needs to learn how to do is because these doctors would tell clients like, oh, you have back issues, don't do deadlifts, don't do squats. But the reality is, as a trainer, my goal was to get them to be able to perform those movements the safest and the best, because if I could get them to do that, nothing was going to protect their spine long term more than that. Next question is from one Conner. If you're not getting sore, should you do more sets in your workout? No. Um, first off, I look and see if you're progressing. Are you getting stronger? Are you improving your mobility? If so, then you're doing everything right. Soreness is a terrible uh, indicator of how good or bad your it's workout is. It's technically a sign of overtraining. Yeah, if mm-hmm. you get really sore, that means you probably overdid it. You know, I, here's Ideally, here's what how I like to feel after a workout or how I'd like my clients to feel after their workouts. Maybe a little soreness or none. That's it. Mm-hmm. If I ask them, that, I, and I, used to, I would do this especially when I get new clients, because when you start training, the, when you first get into working out, it's difficult to gauge intensity because you don't know what's too much, what's not, you know, what's too little. Mm-hmm. So I'd, I would text my client the day after and then the day after that and I'd say, how do you feel? And if they tell me, oh man, I'm really sore, I know I overdid it. If they said, um, I kind of, I think I feel it a little bit, but otherwise I'm okay. Or if they say, oh, I feel great, then we're on the right path. So soreness, aside from telling you you overdid it, 
other than that, there's really nothing, no value in looking at you know how sore you are. It doesn't tell you that your workout was effective. Yeah, I picked this because this was one of those that uh, initially we had talked about uh, you know a while back. Like I know a lot of my clients would share the same sentiment. Like if if they didn't walk out of the the workout and the next day they got sore, they felt like okay, can we like ramp it up? Like what are we doing here? And I mean, it's just a common thing that I think people attribute a good workout with soreness. It's still some Something that exists. I know that we kind of breeze past it all the time because, but this was definitely one of those uh, kind of groundbreaking things that I had to like mentally uh, establish with my clients that yes, the, initially you 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 may feel this tightness, this soreness, you know, the first you know few weeks because it's just novel stimulus, right? And and that does happen. And, and when we switch it up, you're going to feel you know maybe a difference uh, with the soreness just from doing different things. But uh, eventually, your body's going to react act a little bit differently. And so uh, to, to be able to walk out of these and then come back with more energy and, and feel stronger, that's those are the metrics that I'm going for, not the soreness. I think of it real similar to like how I think about losing body fat, right? So everybody wants to see the scale move when you talk about body fat. And it's like, no, I know I'm in the, in the perfect sweet spot if I can actually maintain your scale weight, but lean you out. Because then I know I'm, I'm applying just the right of a caloric deficit to still be able to build a little bit of strength and muscle while you also lose body fat. I think of the same thing, too, when I'm trying to gauge intensity of my training. Can I continue to build strength and mobility in my client without them getting really sore? Yeah. If I can do that, That's I know I am hit, I'm hitting that sucker right in the sweet spot. You know, is it is it likely that I'm going to overreach sometimes and get them a little more sore than I need? Yeah, that's probably going to happen along the way. But I know if we are getting stronger week over week or month over month and they're not feeling sore, I know I'm like, I'm hitting it as a trainer. I'm hitting it just right on the intensity because I'm not overreaching and potentially setting that person back. It's the same way I look at losing body fat. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, when I'm getting my best results, it's when I'm not getting sore. No joke. When I'm doing good workouts and mm -hmm. I feel good and I feel strong, and then the next day I'm not really sore, that's usually when I'm kicking butt. That's usually when I'm progressing and getting stronger each time I work out. It, when I'm getting really sore, you know, once in a while because I change my workout is okay. But if I consistently get too sore, they usually – they usually following with uh, me losing progress. I'm not yeah. getting stronger. I'm not performing better. Yeah, I also notice my volume goes up a bit too, just personally because of not being sore and like you know just like adding in a bit more uh, you know reps and uh, you know more different exercises. It's just it's one of those natural things that just happens because you got more energy and you're you're able to do a bit more. Next question is from Drummer Man ten eighty nine. What is your best financial advice for newlyweds? Oh, so this is not going to be sexy advice, but but, but it, it, this is it's, coming from the cheap ass. Well, that, no, this is this is a hundred percent. I mean, don't take them to McDonald's. You know, here's the deal. It's like a new lifter. Like, okay, what are the advanced techniques for building biggest biceps and whatever? And I'll say things. Okay, squat, deadlift, bench press. You know, overhead press. But yeah, but I read this article where occlusion training and getting a pump and four reps and you know using bands and chains. Like, no, no, no. This is where you need to start. So. This can be confusing for people because you look up financial advice or best ways to invest and you get all these articles on how to leverage your money and leverage debt and invest in the stock market, which companies to pick, you know, how to, you know, how to even gamble in the stock market with things like, you know, short selling and all this other stuff and options and yeah, here's the bottom line, no joke. And I listen, this is forget coming from me. I'm a trainer, I'm a fitness guy, but I I come from a a family of investors. All my cousins, this is what they do for a living. So my brother does for a living. I'm on a thread with them. We talk about this all the time. And it's funny. One of the biggest things that they talk about is how they, now that they're experienced and advanced in investments, the stuff that they used to think was totally wrong. Just like when we started working out, I thought it was all these advanced techniques when in reality it was the basics yeah. that would have got me there. They said, man, the best thing you could do when you first get started is two things. Number one, Eliminate your debt. So don't have debt. Don't have credit card debt. Don't have car debt. Don't pay interest. That's that's money. That's just you're burning. If you want to buy a car, buy a car you can afford to buy right now. That means you got to drive a shittier car. So be it. Don't have credit card debt at all. That's again another big waste. And then number two, save a hundred grand. That's what they always say. My cut. They always say this. Save your first one hundred thousand dollars after you because nothing you can do up until that point will be as consistent as just saving 
or as effective as just saving 100 grand. Once you save $100,000 and you do that, then you look at investing in the market or potentially buying property and stuff like that. But until you get to that point, and this is what they tell me that you are dumb for having debt and for not trying to save your money. What you're probably going to do is you'll make a few mistakes, lose it, and then you're totally screwed. So it's better off to save and not spend. And I know that sounds old school and boring, but that's what they continue to hammer into me. You know, no, no, no. That's, I think that's great advice, dude. I think that, so. I have two things I'm gonna I'm gonna give you, and again, I'm gonna preface it like Sal did. I'm just a fitness guy. You know, so I'm not the I'm not a financial advisor. Um, but I, I I learned the hard way. So I made good money when I was really young, and spent and lost a lot of money. And so later in life, I I came up with this kind of semi conservative formula for myself, and. It's not like what you'll read in some books, because then I'll give you a great book to read too on top of this that doesn't completely align with this. But this is what really got me in a direction of like in a place where I could invest, like Sal saying, saving my first hundred thousand and moving to where I could actually have money working for me. And that was because here's where I struggled. Somebody who didn't have have much, and then I and then I got money was like, man, I work so hard. I want to be able to reward myself. I want to be able to enjoy some of these things. I have there's there are materialistic things that I like. I do like to drive a nice car. I like shoes. There's all these this stuff that I like. But then at the same time too, I don't want to be irresponsible like what Sal's alluding to right now. So I had this little thing that I used to do, and it was okay. And I've always had jobs or businesses on the side to where my my pay is always kind of fluctuated where it's not always like this flat this flat rate. I could work harder in a month because I own my own businesses to make more money. And so I made a deal with myself that if I wanted to buy something, whether it be a $100 pair of sneakers or a $50,000 classic car, I had to have saved or invested the same amount of money. So if I wanted a $100 pair of shoes, I would I need to have also saved or invested $100 of, of that money that month. So I never, ever spend in a month's time more than what I've saved. So 50-50. 50-50. So, and that's after bills, right? So you, you pay all your hard costs that you have, whether that be car payments, rent, mortgage, whatever you have, take care of all that. Then I have an, a set amount of money left over of that 50% of that I would allow to buy things that maybe I want. And then the other 50% has to be saved. That's gotten me a long way. Now that doesn't completely align with the book. I'm going to refer to you, but I wish I would have read this book because it's definitely tightened. I've tightened my game up and it goes more in line with what Sal said it was a great book reference from our good friend, Mike Matthews. And I just finished reading it uh, not that long ago. So, and this I think would be great if you're uh, recently married. I've talked a long time ago on the podcast about things that Katrina and I have done to, you know, build and strengthen our relationship. One of those things that we do is we listen to audiobooks together. Um, listen to Millionaire Next Door. Great read. Also, would be great for you and your partner to listen to it together. Make a you know a couple hours out of the week, whether that be just one or two hours out of the week that you dedicate that you and her sit down or you and him, I don't know who's asking this question, you know, sit down and listen to this book and work your way through that. And it, it addresses everything that Sal said and everything that I've talked about about how you should save and invest your money. Yeah. Yeah, I think I mean, just to kind of throw this out there, reading this question to me is really about getting both parties in alignment first. And I think that uh, a lot of couples uh, still operate with their own financial strategies independent of each other. Uh, and, I, I, and I was actually talking to a few, like one of my brother-in-law and like how they kind of uh, got to the point where they are, but uh, it took some time to, you know, really relieve the fact that, you know, your money is, is their money. It, it's the collective money. So you got to figure out uh, your both of your goals and how you can align both of your goals together. So you really need to have that conversation and sit down and, and pull everything together now and, and really just kind of put all that extra stuff. If I pull all this in and you're not doing, it just creates dissension uh, and that just never works. It just ends up in like fights and, 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 and money is a big thing that really breaks up couples. And so, uh, to, to really just establish, uh, both of your goals, write them out, uh, how you're going to get there. Definitely eliminating debt, you know, saving money, like all these like old schools, conservative methods are, you know, time tested for a reason, but then how are you going to then, you know, collectively as a team move forward in, in your investment strategies and all that. But that's something that, I mean, I had to like have that hard conversation and really put a lot of time and effort in. Okay. We have all this debt here from my 
school. We have this from, you know, your nursing school like this. How are we going to eliminate this? Like what kind of strategies are we going to use in terms of like uh, using our credit card to paying it off every month? So that way we build up our credit score, like, you know, things like that, that just having that conversation, I think is crucial. Yeah. You know what the, the challenge with this is that and it's again, like fitness, People who are getting into fitness and want to change their bodies, they look at the genetically gifted or the guys or girls who take steroids. Or what, oh, I could look like that in a year if I just did all this crazy stuff. And you know, those of us who've been training people for a long time understand the average person. No, you, it's not going to work that way. You'll never be able to sustain it, and you're not going to look like they will because you're your own person. It's like you look at millionaires who start this you know, company and blow up, or you have a friend who got into a company who then went public and they became millionaires. And so you're like, oh, this is how you do it. This is the fast way to do it. If I invest it here and I make 15% here and 10% there, within 10 years will be, it doesn't work that way. It's a sl- it is, unfortunately, or fortunately, it's a slow process. But look, maybe it takes you 10 years to save $100,000, okay? Because it sounds like a lot of money. I know to a newlywed, you think, my God, how many to save $100,000? Okay, it might take you 10 years or 15 years. That's the hard part. After you get to that point, now you have some money you can invest. And here's the thing with money. The more you have, the, the more you can make. It's that initial period that's difficult, that initial period of eliminating debt and saving your money. And that also, by the way, that also de- helps you develop the skills and the financial health to be able to deal with money when you make it or maybe even lose it. Mm-hmm. Because there is a lot of skill that is involved with that. This is why lottery winners tend to go bankrupt. They don't have the skills associated with earning that money. They just get it. So if you go through a period of 10 or 15 years of eliminating debt, living below your means, saving your money, wow, we made our, we saved our first $100,000, you are now prepared to really take yourself to the next level with that amount of money. But again, if you talk to responsible investors, that's what they'll tell you. Eliminate debt, save your first hundred thousand dollars, set those as your initial goals, yeah, and live, I, live be below your means, and I that's the it. only way to do it. Yeah, and you'll yeah. be okay. Millionaire next door. It's a good read for yeah. you, and I think it'd be great for you as a partner to do. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video and audio. If you want to see our faces, come check us out on YouTube. You can also find us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, the producer, he's got an Instagram page too. There's also a fans only Doug page. Doug the Jug. Yeah, you got to check him out there. Uh, at Mind Pump Doug. The next phase now is to focus on unilateral strength. Okay, so now we're going to add a little load, but we're not going to squat with load yet. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do things like lunges, backstep lunges, Bulgarian split stance squats. Step ups is another great exercise. Single leg toe touches. Exercise.